So you found out about aphantasia and you think you have it, but how can we really be sure? I mean, you're the only one that's been inside your head, right? We need a test. Yeah. Welcome back to Aphantasia Meow, first video of 2020. I hope you like my new glasses. We're going to talk about why we need these and as we go throughout the video. I'm back. I took kind of a little break to focus on some other business stuff, and now I'm full at it. Again, took on five, no, six new students in just the month of January alone, so rolling forwards on stuff. And this video is going to be all about the fact that we need a test in the aphantasia community to be able to have readily accessible for people so that if somebody finds out about it, they don't just have to wonder if their own self-diagnosis is correct, but they can actually plug into a test and take it and have it, uh, you know, have an objective measure of their mind's eye, whether they have aphantasia or not. So that's what we're talking about today. Now, as many of you may know, I've been working for the past, geez, it's almost two years now. Um, since April 2018, I've been working with low-functioning visualizers and aphantasics, self-diagnosed aphantasics, and I've been working with these individuals and helping them to get breakthrough in using a functioning mind's eye. Some of them has been drastic breakthrough, like they became mind's eye, uh, you know, they became quite proficient. Some of them, it was much more subtle and they were only able to go into the breakthrough itself. But most people have had some form of breakthrough that I've worked with, which is great. And there's even a bunch of people that have reached out to me that are like, hey, I can't pay for anything right now, but do you have any tips I can, you know, you could share and I'll point them in the right direction. And they end up practicing their mind's eye and end up unlocking more for those themselves too. Um, but the issue has been, it's all self-diagnosis, like I said before. So everybody finds out about the topic and then through your own subjective understanding of what the mind's eye is like, um, then you self-diagnose as an aphantasic, right? And I'm self-diagnosed as a hyperphantasic, self-diagnosed as well as a prophantasic, which uh, we talked about what that is in different videos, which is all fine because there's no other way to do it. But there's an issue with doing it like that is that it's all empirically unreliable. So it's not like this data that I'm getting by working with people I can point to and say, see, it objectively is absolutely making a difference. Now, subjectively, the people are experiencing quite you know, different things during sessions and, and working on it for themselves. But there's no real numbers like from a scientific standpoint that I can point to yet. So I've been working on a method. I've been working real hard at this thing. Now that's where I ran across Joel Pearson's work at the University of South Wales. I'll put their link down below. They're a treasure trove of resources with mind's eye research when it comes to mind's eye research. And I ran across his work, and on a podcast, I heard him mention that he used a technique called binocular rivalry to measure aphantasia, measure the mind's eye, activity in the mind's eye. And I thought, okay, well, I'm, I'm familiar with binocular rivalry. I'm not sure exactly how they're doing what they're doing, um, but I did see like he uses red and green shapes, right? And so I thought, well, I'll just give it a shot and start developing my own binocular rivalry test. Now, if you're not sure of what binocular rivalry is, it refers to when both eyes cannot see two images at once. So typically you wear like red and green 3D glasses or some of the trials have like a divider screen set up. So you can only see one image through one eye and then with the other eye, you're seeing a different image. And what'll happen is your brain will kind of flip flop back and forth. It'll kind of undulate between one Im image to the other. And you can actually do this uh, just a self test if you hold one eye or one hand up in front of one eye like this, like see how the camera can only see my left eye. So my right eye is looking at my hand, but my left eye is looking at the camera. Now I can kind of see that right now it kind of fades in and out from going to my hand to the camera, to my hand to the camera. If you play with your binocular rivalry like that, it's just a fun way to mess around with it. So there's a way to influence what somebody sees on the screen if you're using your mind's eye. So to do a binocular rivalry test, you need 3D glasses like this. One's red and one is green. And you show a red and green image on the screen and your brain can only see one at a time through each eye. Now the trick is if you think of the image, like let's say the red image, before the red and green images flash on the screen, you're more likely to see the red image instead of the green one. Pretty interesting. So I got pretty far in developing my own test with this, 
But what I found was the numbers were kind of all over the place, and I needed to dial in the contrast of the red versus green and figure out like what the different um, variables were. Like some people, maybe they had a red filter on their screen when they were taking it at home, so that would be an issue. Maybe right eye dominance has something to do with what image people see. And so the test wasn't quite working as hoped. It has a lot of little tweaks I need to make. And that's where we're at today. So I really need help from you guys to help dial this binocular rivalry test in and get it calibrated so that it works for pretty much everybody. So this process is cool not only because we'll finally have an accessible test that you can take from home, but also you'll be on the ground floor of developing this out and can say that you helped progress, you know, the uh, independent science scene here on YouTube. So what's involved with this is I'll have multiple iterations of what I call calibration tests. And they're really kind of, they're short, they're like 20 questions long. You'll see red, green images, but it doesn't take very long, maybe like 10 minutes. And what we're doing with those is we're testing contrast, we're testing the different uh, red, green, you know, variations, maybe different images, stuff like that. And there's going to be a max of 10 of those. Um, so yeah, but they shouldn't take longer than five, 10 minutes. Now, once we're done with those calibration tests, we'll have longer test drafts of maybe 50 to 100 questions, and those will be more testing if the idea works, if it's you know ready to say that this is an objective measure of the mind's eye. And we'll talk about how that, the, you know, the numbers, if you want to come aboard, we'll, I'll give you the rundown. Now, since you'll need a pair of these bad boys, I am charging a small $3 fee, and that covers these because I ordered them in bulk. I have a bunch over there in my desk and then the envelope and postage. If you're, one thing I will say is I've shipped these out to a number of international people at this point, like outside the US. And if you're one of those, it just takes a while. So heads up, um, it's kind of snail mail. One guy in China, it took like, I don't know, something ridiculous, like a month and a half or something. Hopefully uh, it doesn't take that, that long wherever you're at, but you're more than welcome. If you're outside the States, more than welcome to jump on, okay? So I need at least 20 people. I'm hoping for at least 20. If not, if we can get more, that's fantastic. Um, hopefully we can get more, that'd be, that'd be awesome. But 20 would be the minimum. I have about five, I think right now, that are working their way through the tests. And the other requirement is you have to be committed to doing each and every single test draft. Again, the first iterations, the calibration tests, those are really short. But then the longer tests, they take around 30 minutes. So just a heads up, it will be a slight time commitment as well. So if you're interested in taking part, I sincerely hope that you come on and help us dial this in to get this out to people. Follow the link. I'll post it somewhere around here on the video. And I'm really excited to work with you on this. So, oh, one thing it also comes with is you book like a 15 minute call with me just so we can get on the same page with stuff. And it's great for people to ask questions at that point or if, you know, if you have any want any pointers and growing your own mind's eye experience and stuff like that. One last thing I'll note too is this calibration period can be done by both aphantasics and non-aphantasics. So if you have family members that want to take part, they're more than welcome to, like way more than welcome to. Get everybody on board if you want. And that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, especially if you think my content is worthwhile and you think it's valuable. It really helps out the channel. And if you comment too, YouTube loves comments. I love them too. I respond to each and every one when I can. That's it for the test. Looking forward to working with you. Also, if you're interested in sessions, I'm doing sessions. I'm really ramping that game up. Like I said, six people came on uh, and we're working together right now through the month of January. And so still taking more students and still taking people through their breakthrough in their mind's eye. So reach out to me through my website. All the links will be down in the description. And that's it for today. I'll be uh, seeing you next time.